Hello everybody, Patrick Glenn Nichols, Muscle Car Barn Finds, and today I'm out here in Southern California, just outside of San Diego, and I flew out here to investigate and inspect this 1970 Chevelle SS, supposedly, um, that was marketed as an LS6 convertible. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm unable to authenticate this as a true SS 454 LS6 convertible. In fact, I can't even authenticate this car as a true SS convertible. Um, from my investigation that this car is a 70 Chevelle Malibu with some neat options, but this is not, definitely not an LS6 convertible like uh, it once was advertised for sale as, but I now have explained to the individual that he cannot do that and he wasn't aware uh, technically the actual owner was not really aware that his car had been cloned so to speak pretty much a clone so the nice guy but again this is not a 70 Chevelle LS6 convertible we'll do a quick walk around video but I wasn't here over 20 30 minutes you know and I had already seen enough to know that that this was definitely not an LS6 convertible we have a a bogus stamp on the engine we have an incorrect turbo 400 we have an incorrect 12 volt we have incorrect lower trailing arms not boxed a lot of in uh, certain options that should be present of course that doesn't prove anything a lot of things get changed in 51 years, so it's my job to determine what this car actually was born as, uh, so that technically a car could have some ch things changed that might not necessarily be Super Sport or, or the standard equipment, and the car still could have been born an LS6 or Super Sport. But in this case, um, it's a definite. This car was definitely not a Super Sport convertible. So. This is a early car, supposedly. Well, it is an early car, built December of 1969 at Baltimore. And most of you are aware that convertibles were only assembled in Baltimore, Maryland, and Van Nuys, California. But we have an incorrect, of course, you can see a lot of things have been changed. The tail lights are not early. And we have the second design rear bumper and we have a incorrect deck lid with the emblem in the wrong spot so it's just pushed on and of course you can see we got reproduction interior top to bottom there was a document in this car for sure at one time the PUI interior was put in this car sometime in the early 90s and I'm gonna say at that point is when more than likely the Baltimore build sheet got away from this car. And through my inspection, I also believe this car is not a tack and gauge car, so the dash has been changed as well. Most of you understand that if it was, the tack and gauges was ordered, even on a Malibu, you would have the round dash. But this car, from what I can tell, the dash has been changed as well. This is not a tachometer, a U14 tack and gauge car. We got one emblem upside down on this fender. And I didn't go as far as to check out dates on wheels. We got an authentic heavy duty cooling top plate on the car. Of course, was not born on this car. and what appears to be the 165 fan trail, but this individual doesn't want his car totally taken apart, so some of which we won't investigate. You see the metal ender fenders. Um, one of the big determining factors that this car is not a super sport car. This car is definitely an automatic car, and all Turbo 400, all super sport cars were born with a turbo 400 if they were automatic and the provision for the kick down harness would be in the firewall this car does not have that provision so that 
is one of the main determining factors along with also super sport cars had 3.8 fuel line and this car does not it's too small it is the smaller fuel line on top of we do have an LS6 engine here but the font and the stamp for the VIN has definitely been stamped so this car at some point somebody tried to clone this the individual who owns it is not the person responsible for that this car was born with front disc brakes as you can see it definitely was born with disc brakes so it was a disc brake Malibu not Cal induction you see it has a later version hood on a December third week car which is definitely incorrect and again I'm here to determine if this car is is an LS6 convertible some of the options that are here um, I didn't dig much deeper because the individual doesn't want his dash taken out and I can't just totally dissemble this person's car so really what I was here to investigate is if this car was born one of the super ultimate sought-after LS6 convertibles and it, it definitely is not so I did explain to the the owner that he cannot market this car unless he wants to find himself in uh, a heap of trouble to try to sell this car as an LS6 convertible because it definitely is not it's a nice car been in California Southern California for a long period of time very solid body on this car underneath I've been all underneath the car it's very solid and so for a car to restore and have a nice solid convertible this is really a nice starter car but definitely not a rare SS 454 to fetch the big dollars that those cars fetch today it was born with cranberry red lower with white convertible top and white bench seat interior the top has been changed to black at one time it was white that's about all that we'll go into today again I didn't dig much deeper other than the fact that the drive line in this car is not authentic and again I can't even authenticate this car to be a super sport car um, so this is definitely a Malibu 70 Chevelle convertible I hope you enjoy my videos again I'm out here in Southern California just about 30 miles outside of San Diego California I flew out here for a potential buyer but I will not be recommending the purchase of this car please like share comment and subscribe I really like all and appreciate all of you guys input on these cars if you have a 70 Chevelle that you need assistance with authenticating or you are looking for a 70 Chevelle Super Sport or you need my assistance or services in any shape form or fashion please contact me at P Nichols 26 at Yahoo or Patrick Glenn Nichols on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks again. More videos on the way.